Okay. Yeah, I agree. Well, you know, if you look at it this way, uh, does it make sense? Okay, if I had the ability to make someone my victim and I could hurt them and do anything I wanted to them and then erase their entire memory of the event, would that make it right? Of course not. Of course not. So, I mean, that's what they do. I mean, they hurt me. I mean, they didn't anesthetize my lower back when they did whatever they did that, you know, left me with early onset of uh, degenerative spine disease. Uh, I mean, it hurt like hell. And uh, um, I know I heard other people screaming. I mean, uh, they hurt people uh, physically, emotionally, and uh, some people don't recover. My buddy didn't. No, because I, it, so I agree. It, it does damage to you. I mean, I'm not going to say who. Now, James in the background knows who I'm talking about, but I'm not going to say who. But you, when you interview, and he's this particular person has been on my show numerous times, and when you talk to him, you can feel. James, what do you feel? A lot of distress, uh, uh, torment in, yeah. in, in, in what he, you know, you can feel it. It's, it's just reeking out of the conversation. You can feel it big time, and it's it's post traumatic stress. My God, and you know the thing is, it's not just him. It's been several uh, people that's been abducted, been coming on here, and I know who you're talking about. But it, it's a you can see the whole pattern of it. I mean, my goodness, think about it. You go into bed at night. Is this a night they're going to take me? And these weigh heavy on you. These scar, you know, the physical pain. Uh, even you know who I'm talking about says those go away, but the the emotional stay with you. And you know who I'm talking about said that, and it's true. And my God, the one person who I'm talking about, they don't even go, they don't even they stay up at night. They sleep during the day basically because of it. So it weighs heavy. Yeah, they yeah, probably feel more secure heavy. sleeping during the day. Well, you know what this. This changed my life. I mean, I, I so much so, I tend to measure my life as pre-1977 when I see myself as uh, basically as a kid, as innocent, as fun loving and uh, after this event in 1977, when I became more serious and more, um, more withdrawn, uh, and it has changed my life to, to this day, you know, I, I, I don't like to be out in the open. You know, if I had to walk across an open field, I'd, ha- I'd, I'd have a panic attack. I'll, I'll walk a mile extra around an open field to keep from being vulnerable and being out there. And uh, why? Because I don't know when they're coming back. I don't know if they're coming back. You know, i got to keep my door open in my bedroom. I can't sleep with the door shut. Uh, i got to keep the, drape sc- the drape- drapery guard drawn every night. Uh, you know, I ran into in Houston. I live in Dallas. I was in Houston, and I ran at an event, and I ran into this guy who's a medical doctor, and uh, he claimed to be an abductee. And we sat down and got to talk, and, uh, you know, he sure enough is a real deal. And uh, he was telling me, he says, yeah, he says, I sleep with a, with a Glock and a high-powered flashlight by my bed. And I said, that's odd, because I sleep with a thirty eight and a... Uh, Union Pacific Railroad flashlight by my bed. <laughs> and uh, we were talking about uh, uh, things that freak us out. And uh, I was talking about naked mannequins in a storefront window. Oh, just, they, just, they just give me the creeps. And he said, oh, <laughs> you could see the physical reaction in his body. He, he's like, yeah, he says, I can't look. i got to turn away. Uh, something about especially if the mannequins are, are nude and from the waist up without a wig or anything on, those, those just freak me out. I and, guess uh, you wouldn't. Too. You wouldn't want to be in my studio, I can tell you that, right, James? <laughs> <laughs> right, my goodness. Wow. Yeah, you, you wouldn't like it. I, I got mine up here for security. They're here to protect me. Yeah. <laughs> especially the one that's like like seven foot tall with a sword. But anyway, uh, I can tell you that it does do damage. Now, going back, now you, you, you've been abducted. What do you re- do? You remember anything? Because again, this, what happens is we get going right, and it's a great conversation. I feel like I know you, Terry. I feel like we're sitting in a front room. 
you're on the couch, I'm sitting here on the other couch drinking my tea, and we're just having a discussion. But what happened to you? What do you remember? Oh. What did they do to you and that, that UFO? Um, let, let me tell you, you know, I, we were gone. We, we figure a little over four hours. And uh, I'll tell you, I, I don't have a clear, linear memory of everything that happened. I, I don't. But I do have bits and pieces, and I'll share those with you. And uh, those are bits and pieces that uh, were drawn out through hypnosis by the U.S. Air Force uh, when I was interrogated by the OSI. And they're the same memories that haunt my dreams to this day. And it's, it's frightening stuff. It, it is frightening. It's not for the faint of heart. They're, they're, they wake me up screaming, and my wife has to calm me down, and I have to take my flashlight and my pistol and go to every room in the house, check every door, check the locks, check the security system. And unless I do that, I can't get back to sleep. But I'll tell you what I saw. I remember I was, we were in the tent, and I, I passed out. I just, just passed out cold. And the next thing I remember was standing inside the tent Tent, pardon me, standing inside the spaceship. And I describe it in my book as being a block long, a city block long, on each leg of the triangle. So it's enormous. It's, it's like somebody levitated a five-story office building. It's just incredibly big. But the inside of it, and I don't know to this day if I was actually seeing the same craft or did they maybe take us on board this one and then they take us someplace else? Because the thing that I saw when I opened my eyes was I was in a craft or something that was the size of a football stadium. And it was incredibly busy with multiple levels of walkways. Everything was either white or stainless steel. And light was emitted. There were no light fixtures, but light came seemed to come out of every every bit of the wall. I mean, uh, the place was insanely lit up. I mean, it would be like if you took, if you turned every lamp on in your house and replaced it with a, you know, put a 300 watt bulb in and turn on every light in your house and try to live, you know, walk around and live like that. That's what it was like. That's why I had uh, park welders burns to my eyes. Both of us did. And we were burnt to a crisp. We were, we were, I didn't blister, but you know, I was uh, red on uh, every, every 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 inch of my body, my under my hair, under my arms, my soles of my feet were burned, like the worst sunburn you could get without blistering. And we were severely dehydrated. But back to back to the craft, um, there were these golf cart things that were moving around that were just hovercraft. There was no visible. Uh, means of propulsion. They didn't have wheels. There were moving sidewalks like you had at the airport, and that's what they used when they marched us down. We were frozen, just like Calvin Parker. We were frozen. We couldn't move a muscle, and I had my clothes in my hand, and the only thing I could move was my eyes, and I could see that Toby was next to me, and we took this long we were like planks of wood. We were frozen so solid. We were on this moving sidewalk, and uh, these little gray guys are escorting us. And uh, when we got to the end, we we're, were kind of like set to the side. There were some other humans there off kind of kitty corner to us, and they were in the same situation. Uh, but they were a mix of men, women, and children which I didn't understand, but they were all like us. They were all naked and holding their clothing in their hands, frozen solid and unable to move anything except their eyes. And you could see the fear in their eyes and their eyes are just darting all over. I mean, left, right, up, down, every way you can imagine. And they're all crying uh, as we are. And we're just terrified. And we passed a, uh, like a gallery of aquariums that had what I first thought were puppies inside this 
pinkish liquid with, uh, and they had umbilical cords. And you know how newborn puppies have all those folds of skin? Well, these things were tan in color, and they had that same folds of skin. Uh, but I think they were some kind of human hybrid. I, I, I think, uh, as a matter of fact, as we're, as we're on this moving sidewalk, I'm straining my eyes to the right looking at these things, just freaked out. And one of them opens an eye, and that's a, that's a common nightmare uh, that I have. And for some reason, that just scares scares the death out of me. It just is um, just too much. And I'll wake up, you know, with a start, with a scream. And we were standing there waiting. And while we were waiting, I could hear a woman screaming. I mean, and she was screaming in pain. And then I noticed my buddy's gone. And then I hear his voice. I recognize his voice, and he's screaming, Oh, my God. Oh, my God. No, 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 no. And he's screaming. And, and that, you know, that really unnerved me because I knew the kind of man he was. And he wasn't, uh, he wasn't the kind of person to easily be uh, moved like that, to scream. Then it was my turn. And they took me, and it was a, it was a dome-shaped, it was a domed white room that had all the appearance of a medical room, of an operating room. It had an extremely bright light, overhead light. Um, and I want to say that there were like stainless steel instruments hanging that were within reach of this uh, thing that was working on me. And I remember when they, they, the grays put me on this table, I was just like a plank of wood. And I remember thinking this table's going to be cold because it looked like it was porcelain, but it wasn't. It was warm. And I realized it was warm because, you know, who knows how many bodies had been on it that night. And as soon as I laid back, they started working on my lower back. And, oh, my God, it hurt worse than anything I've ever experienced. I mean, now, it, was hey, just, Terry? it was surgery without anesthesia. Now, Terry, yeah. we got to hold that till we come back from break. See how fast these breaks come in every half an hour? Oh, and, my gosh. And We're going to find yeah. out what happened to him on that table. And, and why? Maybe it was warm. We'll find that out in three minutes. You're listening to, well, Terry Lovelace, who was abductee uh, back in the 70s. And uh, you're listening to Night Dreams Talk Radio After Dark. I'll be right back. As I gaze upon the annals of time One thing that comes through We are not alone in this universe It's a thought that rings true Ancient cave dwellers drew spacecraft on a pulse It's a recurring I've seen the same thing while walking late at night And I know it's not a dream From Malmstrom to Manat Boston to LA There are people asking questions and they will not go away But what has been seen might not be what it seems The government's shadow the truth they will ridicule everything you say and do it's all part of a deception it's a puppet master's tool and I've seen those craft shut down the saddles from ten miles away 